California is such a big place. If you're planning a trip here, how do you decide what to see and do? Do you go see the surf? Do you go see the national parks? Do you visit Disneyland, Universal Studios, San Francisco, Los Angeles? Well, those are all the things I'm going to cover in this video. And I'm going to cover in a style much like if you were my friend and we were sitting down at a coffee shop and you said, Chris, You've been born and raised and lived most of your life in California. What should I see when I come? And we're going to spend a lot of time looking at the map to help answer that question. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up Google Maps here and orient us to California and orient nine of the nine of the classic itineraries that I see people do in California. Uh, the first one is the San Francisco Bay Area right up here. And I'm going to go through these real quickly now, and we're going to go through them in more detail in our hour here on this guide. The second one is people come to visit the Los Angeles area. Things like Hollywood, the Santa Monica Pier, Universal Studios, Disneyland, Disney Adults here in LA. The third is people visit San Diego down here. They come to visit SeaWorld. They come to visit the great beaches of San Diego. The fourth one is they kind of connect all these things together. They drive what's called the Pacific Coast Highway, the coastal route from San Francisco to Los Angeles down to San Diego. There's also the National and State Parks Tour. California has a lot of national parks, national forests. You can see when I zoom in one more level here, we have all these national parks and mountains right here. We've also got Death Valley National Park, Mojave National Preserve, Joshua Tree National Park. So there's a lot of great nature to see in California. There's also people who come for winter sports. And in in that case, there's a bunch of mountains that are here in the center of the state that get good snow in the winter months. There's also people that continue on to Vegas. That's number seven. There's also people that continue on to Arizona, to the Grand Canyon. That's number eight. And then number nine, people who continue on down to Tijuana or Baja, California here in Mexico. All right. Now, before I dive us into the San Francisco Bay Area and we look at that Pacific Coast Highway Drive, since that's the most popular one, I do want to orient you to some of the roads first. So, uh, looking here, zooming out on California, when I zoom out to this level, you see one major highway runs its way down California from north to south. That is the Interstate 5. You can take the Interstate 5 all the way from Tijuana in the south, all the way up through Oregon, Seattle, all the way up to Vancouver in Canada in our neighbors to the north. But the 5 it's going to get you there the fastest. It is not the most scenic road. The most scenic road, as I zoom in, becomes this road that hugs the coast. This is known as uh, Pacific Coast Highway, often the one. You'll see it numbered. In some places, it's the 101 and the one together. So the one is the closest to the coast. The 101 is the one that is further out. And you can see in some places they tend to cross or the might even become the same thing in certain places. Uh, and then there's two highways in the center to pay attention to. There is the 99. The 99 runs through California's Central Valley here from Bakersfield. It's this road that runs up this way. It'll take you all the way to Sacramento. That is kind of like farmland California. These are also the gateway towns to the national parks uh, that are here in the mountains. And then there's the Highway 395 that runs basically from Lake Tahoe, Reno area, down to the east side of the mountains. That'll bring you back down here and connect into Victorville. Okay, so that's your like road orientation to California, the major north-south highways that people uh, take as they go around. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the Pacific Coast Highway route, probably the most popular route. And you can start this from San Francisco or you can start it from San Diego, but uh, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna start from the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm gonna zoom in to Google Earth to take a look at this. All right, so, uh, and you know, there's definitely an argument about who's better. Is it NorCal or is it SoCal, Northern California, Southern California, by the way, People call California lots of things. NorCal, SoCal, Cali. Is it Cali? You know, we got the California burrito, the Cali burrito. We'll talk about all those things as we go through here. But we got this small little city called San Francisco, one of the most famous cities in California, just here as a small tip of this peninsula in the San Francisco Bay. So this 
whole area that's here along the San Francisco Bay is affectionately known as the Bay Area. If you hear people say the terms, I'm going to the Bay Area, I'm from the Bay Area, that's this whole area around the San Francisco Bay, which often intermingles with Silicon Valley, home to the Googles and the Facebooks uh, of the world. So if you're doing San Francisco, I think San Francisco is probably worth three days in and of itself, just to say in San Francisco. And then some of the things that you might want to see while you're around San Francisco, number one is Napa up here to the north. This is California's famous wine country in Napa. And there are two towns that are kind of right near each other. There's Napa Valley and there's Sonoma Valley. And you can see on this that there's a mountain in between them. There's one road that goes up through Sonoma and there's another road that goes up through Napa. There's a whole bunch of, uh, they're not just places that grow grapes, but they're like wineries that have like turned into theme parks. Some are built like castles. Other ones have cable cars. Uh, even if you don't drink wine, it is neat to spend a day trip to Napa from San Francisco. There's also plenty of good hotels up there in Napa. Uh, now, before we go south down the Pacific Coast Highway, some other things you might want to see up here in the north, Sacramento. It is our state capital. Um, really not that many people visit Sacramento, but just near Sacramento, there's this area over here known as Yolo County. Davis, home to UC Davis, the number one agricultural university, neat bicycling town. There's a cool town over here called Winters. Um, and then over here to the east, we have this lake. This is Lake Tahoe. This is, uh, so if it's from San Francisco, a couple hours to Napa, Another maybe 90 minutes Sacramento, maybe another 90 minutes or two hours over here to Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is a big snow area, big nature area, and it's also an interesting lake or city or region uh, because it has a bunch of cities that go around it, but like half of the lake is in California and then half of the lake is in Nevada, so you can also hop over here to Nevada pretty quick from Lake Tahoe. Okay, so bringing us back to the San Francisco Bay Area, a couple things you might want to see in the San Francisco Bay Area before you leave there uh, is Berkeley. Berkeley's right over on this side right here. Berkeley is a college town home to the University of California. Berkeley, really neat architecture, lots of great restaurants to eat at. Oakland, known as one of the most dangerous cities in San Diego. You might want to give that one <laughs> a skip. Uh, but there is some cool stuff to see in downtown Oakland. Um, you just need to like keep your wits about you, pay attention to where you're going. The Chinatown in Oakland is kind of neat as compared to the San Francisco Chinatown, which is more touristy Chinatown. The Oakland Chinatown is more of a working Chinatown. By the way, if you hadn't realized it yet, pretty much all these destinations I'm talking about, I've got videos on. I've got videos on Lake Tahoe. I've got videos on Napa. I've got videos in San Francisco. i got videos on Oakland, Chinatown. So any of these that you want to dive more into, I've got links in the description to my San Francisco area playlist and my Southern California playlist. That's just kind of how I've divided them. And you'll find uh, videos for pretty much all of these destinations in those playlists. The other things I think are worth seeing in this Bay Area uh, the Tesla factory is over here. If you can get in to see a Tesla tour or you picking up a Tesla from the Tesla factory, it's over here in what they call the East Bay. San Jose is the biggest city in the area. Uh, and so it's worthwhile noting that the San Francisco Bay Area has three airports that you might consider flying into. There is San Jose Airport, which is down here in the south. There is uh, Oakland Airport, which is up here in the north. And then there is San Francisco International Airport, SFO. If you're coming from far, far away, this is probably where you'll be coming into because it's the big international airport that has flights to, you know, Tokyo and Singapore and everywhere you'd want to go. The weather is awful there. Um, it's like foggy all the time. Flights are always delayed. And so if you can get a flight, uh, I prefer, so Oakland is right here across the bay. My favorite is definitely the San Jose Airport. Uh, which is just over, this looks like an airport. Is this San Jose? This is a different one. This is like, I think this is a military airport. Um, but so San Jose Airport, which uh, by my my recollection is over, why can't I find San Jose Airport? Come on, San, whoop, whoop too many keyboards around here. FJC Airport, there we go. This is the great part about search. So, search, 
All right, there we go. San Jose Airport, right down there, right actually close in the San Jose, close in the center. But what I like about this airport, it doesn't have the same fog delays, so flights are much more on time. You'll find Southwest Airlines is the big carrier going to San Jose and into Oakland. Uh, also, if you're um, like, a, like a tech geek, you might enjoy Mountain View, where you can like drive by Google's headquarters. If you're an Apple geek, then you might enjoy visiting Cupertino, because in Cupertino, and you can, I don't even need to search for this, I can see it right on here. In Cupertino, you'll find Apple Park, that is Apple's headquarters, which you can't go in there unless you know somebody who works for Apple, but uh, right across the street, they do have the Apple Park Visitor Center right here, which is like the coolest Apple store ever. This one's open to the public and it has displays that talk about Apple Park and from the rooftop up there, you can actually like have a view into uh, the big sphere or circle right there. Okay, so <clears throat> zooming back, back, back out again to the top. All right, so that's kind of stuff you might want to do in San Francisco if you're visiting the Bay Area. Three days in San Francisco, if you're doing the whole Bay Area, you could easily spend a week in just the Bay Area. Uh, if you're going to do those national parks and things like that from there, then you'd kind of like launch over this way and go down to the 99 and visit Yosemite and these sorts of things. Uh, but what we're going to cover here is we're going to cover more the coastal route because I find this to be the route that more people do and more people have more questions on because I feel like the state... National parks are just a little much more straightforward. Uh, but people always ask me the question about like, Chris, going from San Francisco down to LA or San Diego, what should I do? What should I see? Where should I stop? Uh, and so we'll take a look at that. So this drive, um, you know, you can do sort of one of two ways. If you're coming from San Francisco, you can go down the one, this coastal route, it's really pretty. Or you can go down the route through Silicon Valley and stop at all the tech companies. Uh, and then kind of your first, I'll call it major attraction along the coast is Santa Cruz. And if you come down the one, you'll get to it this way. Or if you come to it from Silicon Valley, you'll take the 17, which is this really winding mountainous route that goes through all of these redwoods. It's a pretty drive, although a slightly, slightly hairy one if it's nighttime or if it's raining. But Santa Cruz right here is a really neat, kind of like funky coastal town. Uh, it Santa Cruz is like the, I say, closest real beach town to San Francisco. Yes, there are beaches in San Francisco, but I wouldn't call San Francisco beach town. San Santa Cruz, you know, has like a real surf vibe to it. There's this neat wharf. There's also a uh, amusement park on the sand, the Santa Cruz boardwalk right here, which is only open seasonally. <clears throat> so do pay attention when you're going. It might not be open on weekdays. It might only be open on weekends, but it's pretty cool. It's got like big roller coasters right there on the sand. So Santa Cruz is definitely worth at least one night as you kind of go through here. There's also one of my favorite things to do in Santa Cruz. There's a uh, like a railroad that runs through like these mountains and takes you up through the redwoods. That's pretty cool. This place called the Mystery Spot is like a funky tourist attraction too. Um, and then the like the Harry Cowell Redwood State Park. Uh, you can like walk through here and you can, you know, have like hiking trails through the redwoods. There are much more redwood state parks in like Northern California, north of San Francisco, uh, but less people tend to go up that way, which is why I'm recommending you see these redwoods here. And if you want to do the steam train, that's called Roaring Camp, where you can take this steam train. It's just, it's a tourist train. It takes you from the bottom of the hill up to the top of the hill, gives you like an hour to walk around and takes you back down. Uh, but it's pretty fun, especially if you got kids and they like trains. Uh, okay. So we're going to go down now. What's the next big stop? There's this coastal drive along the one this way. And there's kind of a cool town over here. So there's the 101 that I talked to you about, this town called Gilroy right here. What's cool about Gilroy, Gilroy is the garlic capital of California, of the USA, of the world, I think. Gilroy is a garlic town. They're like garlic is everywhere. There's restaurants that serve garlic. You can get garlic ice cream in Gilroy. So if you like garlic, Pick up some garlic while you're over in Gilroy. And then the next town to see is the town of uh, Monterey, which is right over here. Uh, Monterey is famous for a couple things. One, it has another neat fisherman's wharf, another neat pier over the water. Uh, but I think more than that, it is famous for the aquarium the Monterey Aquarium, which is right over here, is like 
<clears throat> one of the top aquariums in the USA. Um, and that is like the lamest picture ever of the aquarium, but they have a lot of like sea otters and it's built right on the coast. So if you like uh, sea life, uh, check that out and seafood, check out the pier. It's also kind of like a neat downtown you can walk around. Uh, then there is Pebble Beach over here, the famous Pebble Beach with all the various golf courses. There's this drive you can take along the side called the 17 mile drive and you can go take a picture with the lone cypress. There's this tree right here. It's this one tree built on this, the end of this, I guess, small promontory, um, which everybody does this drive to. If you wanna take this coastal drive through Pebble Beach, you have to pay. It's a toll road that you can drive around to see the scenic view and go get your picture with the lone pine. Just south of Pebble Beach, we have the town of Carmel right here. Carmel by the sea is definitely a rich people's town. Um, and in Carmel, there's a neat little main street uh, that has like a ton of like restaurants and things like that on it. Um, and there's a few really high-end hotels in Carmel, but uh, it is neat to just check out and see what, see what the 1% uh, lives like there in Carmel. Okay, we're gonna go on <clears throat> down Big Sur, but before I do that, because I'm recording this live, I wanna take a few questions from the live stream, and then we'll get back to the coast route. I'm also gonna take a drink. Mm. Drink. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Karen says, next trip to California, I am going to the aquarium for sure. Kathy says she's not sure about the garlic ice cream. It's surprisingly good, believe it or not. Yes, believe it or not. Um, uh, Laurel says, definitely don't miss the aquarium. Norman says, Gilroy has a garlic festival where they name a garlic queen. That's super cool. Um, and uh, Clark says, don't forget about Hearst Castle. We'll get to Hearst Castle as we get a little more south, but thank you for letting me know to not forget it. Uh, Brandon says, the sequoia trees are a must see for me. And Jennifer agrees that the railroad and the mystery spot are where it's at. Um, and Brooklyn Joe says, earlier I said Oakland is the most dangerous city in San Diego. Is that what I said? Most dangerous city in California, for sure. Um, okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, continue on. Uh, oh yeah, right, and so related to famous people, uh, Points Traveler points out that Clint Eastwood used to be the mayor of Carmel, indeed, and like Clint Eastwood has a restaurant that you can eat at in Carmel. It's got like really neat views of like the ocean and like of a farm that has like some sheep and things like that. Um, so there we go. Okay, uh, and then James says, someday I would like to do a PCH road trip. I'd love to visit all those beautiful coastal towns. Awesome, James, well, you'll be well prepared after this video. Okay, let's go back to the map. So uh, we'll zoom out again so we can just see where we are here in California. I don't need San Jose Airport to be, um, I don't need that to be selected for me anymore because we know where San Jose Airport is. All right, so we are back here in Carmel by the Sea. And so you could see we're sort of, you know, if you took the 101, you'd go a little bit inland. If you took the five, you'd go right through the middle. If you took the 99, you'd go through some of these towns like Fresno, Tulare, um, Bakersfield, down that way, which by the way, right about now, this time of year, February, the almonds are blooming, the almond blossoms, they look like cherry blossoms, and they're all along this Interstate 99, Interstate Highway 99, point of order, Interstate, Highway, the five, as you see on this map, has this little blue thing with the, it's like a shield with like the red on top. Interstate Highway, funded and maintained by the federal government of the United States, connects um, multiple states together, becomes an interstate. All of these things that are just white like this, these are highways or they're California routes, they stay within the state. Uh, and so many states will have a, a one, the main, the main route through that state, but there is only one five, because uh, that goes through multiple states and doesn't get renumbered as it goes through. All right, so here, uh, this one that goes through Big Sur. Big Sur has a lot of nature, hiking, not a lot of hotels along this way. Um, you know, maybe a few Airbnbs, some cabins. There's a couple of high-end hotels. Uh, and then there was a suggestion to say, Chris, do not forget Hearst Castle, which is in San Simeon, right up here, a little bit inland. And this Hearst Castle is a uh, amazing 
mansion that you can visit and tour and you can see this thing is actually built up like a castle. They have a whole bunch of different tours you can take of Hearst Castle. Uh, it is worth maybe half a day to visit Hearst Castle. It's all like a, sh like a shuttle bus sort of thing situation. So you need to, you come down here, you drive along the one in San Simeon, then you come into the Hearst Castle Visitor Center, you park in this area, depending on your tour, they take you on a shuttle bus up there, and you go on the tour that you paid for and took, but that is definitely a worthwhile stop along Central Coastal California. All right, <clears throat> next town, that's worth a visit this way, uh, Morro Bay over here. Morro Bay is famous for this big, this big rock right here. There's this little bay right here, and then there's this big rock called Morro Rock. It's worthwhile to stop and drive through and take a picture of the gigantic rock in Morro Bay. It's kind of like the big ball of twine in some cities. Like, go see the big ball of twine or go see the big dinosaur. Uh, in San Luis Obispo, uh, San Luis Obispo is a, also like a cute, it's not quite on the coast, but it's a cute small town. It has a cute walkable downtown Main Street uh, that California is famous for. There's a university here called uh, San Luis Obispo. Sometimes they call it SLO, S-L-O, uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo or Cal Poly SLO. If you stop in San Luis Obispo, eat at Firestone Grill, one of my favorite restaurants anywhere. They specialize in tri-tip sandwiches. They are really delicious. Um, it is also home to the Madonna Inn. What is the Madonna Inn? The Madonna Inn is a really uh, funky, <laughs> funky kind of hotel over here. Um, you can't really tell from the outside, maybe you can a little bit, if you can see like the statues on some of these things. Oh, this this all looks funky. No, this, this doesn't really work all that well, but like every room is funky and every room looks different. Um, so if you're looking for something really unique to stay at, uh, check out the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo. I, by the way, too unique for me, so we stayed at the courtyard, but I know many people have gone there because they've specifically wanted to stay there. Uh, okay, next up we have Pismo Beach. Pismo Beach, coastal town, uh, just to the south of that, and I can see it, but I'm searching for it, so I get the orientation of Google Earth to go back to where it was so y'all aren't confused. Pismo Beach is famous for clams and clamming, so it's a neat little beach town this way. And then, this is where you can see where I see like the one and the 101, they join through here and then they split off again. So Pismo Beach, the one continues along the coast and the 101 goes inland a bit. Uh, if you continue and they kind of split and they get closer together, uh, but along the one, you will drive next to the Vandenberg Space Force Base. This is where they do the West Coast space launches. So when they launch satellites up into space, things like that from the West Coast, SpaceX, Elon Musk fame, this and that, those are all done out of Vandenberg. So if you're here to see a space launch, that's where you're gonna see it from. The town of Lompoc, it's kinda like the closest that you'll get. Uh, if you are gonna stay there, the only decent hotel is the Embassy Suites. Um, another cool uh, place to check out here related to food, and I'm gonna search for this one. There is a restaurant called Jocko's, and it is in Nipomo, California. It's actually, I should have I should have called this up when we went up here. Uh, Jocko's has some of the best steaks that you're gonna find in all of California. It is a little tiny establishment. If I can click on this, uh, maybe it'll bring it up. Little tiny establishment that cooks all of their steaks over an open barbecue type flame fire where to change the heat levels, they just raise and lower this grill. Super legit, super kind of like, um, like a like a dive bar steakhouse sort of way where like you feel like everybody here should have rode their Harleys in or something like that. Uh, but it is it is really good. Your tummy will thank you if you stop at Jocko's on your drive. It is on the uh, 101 uh, after San Luis Obispo before you were to get to uh, Vandenberg or Santa Inez or some of these places. All right, so because of this Space Force base, you can't drive along the coast where there's the base. And then as you kind of get to um, the Santa Barbara area around here is where it rejoins the coast. Now, before we get to Santa Barbara, one town that's worthwhile mentioning is the town of Solvang. And Solvang is famous 
for being a Danish town. Um, not like the pastry variety, uh, but Danish in the sense that a lot of people from Denmark have come to live in Solvang. Uh, and so because of that, you can get a lot of um, Danish food, Danish donuts, Danish pastries. Uh, they've got like, you can see this like Danish town. It's got like a windmill and things like that here too. There's an ostrich farm in Solvang. So Solvang is totally worth a few hours stop, get a lunch, get a dinner, walk around the little town of Solvang, feed the ostriches uh, before you continue on. Okay, so then continuing on, next stop is Santa Barbara over here. Uh, these towns of like Goleta, Carpinteria, these kind of make the Santa Barbara metropolitan area. Santa Barbara is probably of the central coastal California region after Carmel, like the next most affluent um, coastal community. So if you're looking for high-end hotels, you'll find a lot of high-end hotels in Santa Barbara. You'll find a lot of hotels. There's like over a hundred hotels in Santa Barbara, that small town. Uh, it has another uh, wharf here that has a lot of like seafood restaurants on it. One of my favorites is the Santa Barbara Shellfish Company that you see here at the end. Uh, it has a cool pedestrianized main street through the center of town. You'll also notice all these red roof tiles. It's like by regulation, they wanted to make Santa Barbara feel like a Spanish town. So in the old town section, they require these uh, red roofs along things. Santa Barbara is also home to one of the best um, kept missions over here. The old mission, Santa Barbara. They sometimes call it the queen of the missions in California. And then the final one I'll mention is Santa Barbara. In addition to the wharf, there's also uh, this pier here where the fishermen come in. And on Saturdays over here, they have a fisherman's market where the fishermen pull their boats up and you can like get the fish right off the boat. In particular, Santa Barbara is famous for uni or sea urchin. And so if you come here in season, you can get the uni right off the boat. They crack it, give it right to you, the yellow ones and the purple ones. And Santa Barbara is known for some of the sweetest sea urchins in the world. If you're into that, definitely make sure you get some from the Fisherman's Market Santa Barbara. And if you want to know more about that and Santa Barbara, I got a whole video on Santa Barbara. That's why it's just a short one here. You will also notice Santa Barbara, if we're doing the like the look of the California coast, sort of has a different orientation than the rest of it. Most of the coast tends to face like west-ish, uh, but Santa Barbara tends to face south-ish. So a uh, whole different vibe where like in most parts of California, the sun sets over like the sand, over the water, uh, but not in Santa Barbara because it has this little different orientation on the coast. Uh, next up over here, we've got the kind of metropolitan areas of Ventura, Oxnard, and Channel Islands. Ventura has a cool uh, pier, a lot of beaches around here. And then Channel Islands, if you were looking to go to these islands off here, these are the Channel Islands. They're a national park. The only way to get to them is by a ferry that you take from over here, you can do camping and hiking and things like that. On these islands, they are uh, relatively undeveloped uh, and mostly a uh, nature preserve. Okay, from here, you have your choice. Do you continue on the one and go down to Malibu or do you go on the 101 to go more into like LA, LA, which we're gonna hit in just a moment, but I'm gonna take a break, drink and we'll hit some more comments from the live stream before we continue into LA. Uh, Anthony says he is coming in June from New York and his goal is to see everything but Skid Row. All right, that sounds good. Skid Row is definitely uh, something you should pass. John says Santa Cruz is the same way where it faces west instead of south. Thank you for that. Points Traveler says are Santa Barbara's beaches known to have tar balls? Um, I don't know, really. And I say that because since I live uh, more in Southern California where the water's warmer, I never have any reason to go in the water at Santa Barbara where it's colder. The warmest, if like if you're coming to California and you wanna go to the beach, San Diego is where it's at because that's where the water is the warmest because it's the most south in California. Um, and San Diego is not known for tar balls on the beach. So there we go. <laughs> Paint Killer says, I have a nice choice of drink because I can't talk about California without bringing up in and out. Yes, I, I planned this one today because I figured Nothing is more Californian than uh, In-N-Out Burger, which is what I had for dinner today. Um, 
Laurel says, <clears throat> I have Soul Bang. Maybe I love Soul Bang. Uh, Kathy says, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, it really does help me in the YouTube algorithm. If you hit that thumbs up to let YouTube know you enjoy it, so they should share it with more people. Uh, and then Anthony says, uh, I think his agenda is San Diego, Palm Springs, Joshua Tree, Sequoia, Yosemite, LA, Las Vegas, Zion, and back to Vegas. A pretty classic itinerary right there. <laughs> and... Um, Let's see. Uh, Paint Killer says, I should mention that if you want to catch rocket launches from Vandenberg, you can do it without going on the base. Absolutely, because they're so big and this and that, you can see it uh, just from in town and you don't have to go on base. Uh, Art says, where are the sharks? I guess um, any, any place where there's water, though California doesn't really have that many sharks. The water's actually too cold and so the sharks don't like it all that much. Jenny Fight asks if there's a chocolate shake. It is a iced tea unsweetened, but the shakes at In-N-Out are uh, quite good. Mandocratic Mafia says, do you prefer In-N-Out or Shake Shack? In-N-Out is my like main squeeze. I eat a Shake Shack often too, but I eat an In-N-Out burger more than Shake Shack because I think the value proposition is much higher than In-N-Out burger. Like fries, drink, and a burger is like half the price at In-N-Out is what it is at Shake Shack. Um, uh, one take situation, uh, good to see you again. And he says, I've been living in California since the 70s and didn't know 95% of this awesome info. Uh, and Deep Spice says, Santa Monica or Redondo Beach better? Let's get on to LA and answer that question. Thank you, Deep Spice. Okay, so back to our map. Uh, I'm gonna zoom back out again so we can see where we are in California. Um, okay, so. Uh, San Francisco up here. We've come this way. We stopped at Jocko's in N Nipomo. Uh, and now let's go ahead and put a pin on Malibu, where we're going to go next. So if you're doing the coastal route, you should definitely drive through Malibu. I mean, if you are doing this drive, drive through Malibu. It's really pretty. It's a really scenic drive. Um, another place where it faces south. Uh, Malibu is where like the rich and famous live, the stars live, the celebrities live. And it is a very like, a lot of it is just nature preserve and sort of like not much, just like houses that are on the coast. Uh, if you are um, kind of like visiting uh, Malibu and you can only go to one spot, uh, my favorite spot is Point Doom right here, D-U-M-E. There's Point Doom State Beach. So if you if you were to put Point, Point Doom in your map, uh, you're going to get this like parking lot that has like eight parking spots right here. And that's really sort of like unachievable because those are always full. Uh, instead, there's this like beach parking lot right here. So if you just search for Point Doom State Beach, then you'll get into this beach parking lot where you can actually find parking. And there's a hike that'll bring you up from the beach up to here. You can hike around the point uh, and then you can hike your way down here too to Big Doom Beach that feels much more um, remote, scenic, charming than the beach over there with the parking lot. And then you won't be able to see them from the bottom, but you can see the houses on the top of this cliff for like definitely where the rich and famous live because, you know, they need a swimming pool uh, right right overlooking the ocean, right? Because, you know, if you had an ocean view, what would be better than that except for a swimming pool right in front of it? Too. The other spot to check out in Malibu, there, uh, Pepperdine University is here and is Malibu Pier. So there's one pier in Malibu. There's a restaurant down at the end of it, which uh, it's called Malibu Farm. It's okay, it's expensive, but the views are fantastic. If you're coming here, also do expect to pay in this small parking lot uh, right out in front. Other than that, there's not, not that much to do in Malibu other than drive through, enjoy the view. Uh, you can eat at Nobu. You can eat some really high in sushi. There's a Nobu hotel. You can spend $1,000 a night to stay there. Somebody asked if I was part of the 1%, uh, and no, I cannot afford the rooms at Nobu. All right, so that now brings us up to the Santa Monica area. Um, but before we do that, uh, one stop that you'd be interested in is the uh, too many keyboards is the Getty Villa the there are so there's two Gettys so uh, J Paul Getty he was a multi-millionaire gazillionaire and he was really big in the collecting art and so he lived 
in this house, the Getty Villa, or maybe this was the house he built. I don't know. There was some like thing where like it was completed just about the time he passed away or something like that. But a lot of his art was stored here in the Getty Villa, this uh, now museum, but that he built it to really look like an Italian villa. So it's neat just like another one like Hearst Castle to go like this to be like, this is a rich dude's house with this like big reflecting pool in the middle. Um, and uh, you get there right off the coast highway from Malibu right before you get into Santa Monica. Now, the The Getty, as it's called, The Getty, or The Getty Center, is actually not right next to that villa or not in Malibu or Santa Monica. It is actually off the Interstate 5 right here, and this is where most of the art is. So if you're coming just to look at art, then come to The Getty uh, Center that is here along the Interstate 5, around, uh, what, Sepulveda, Sepulveda Canyon here. Is this gonna tell me what off-ramp this is? No, uh, but anyway, just know they're in two different places. And if you like art, then you'll wanna go to both of those. Okay, but now this is the whole like LA basin over here. Uh, and so Santa Monica, one of the quintessential beach towns in California. If you like beaches, if you like piers, Santa Monica is a must stop on your trip. It has one of the most amazing piers in the world. This gigantic pier that comes out here. It has a big like roller coaster on the pier. It has a Ferris wheel on the pier. Best time to visit Santa Monica Pier, sunset. Uh, or just a little bit before sunset, maybe like five o'clock. Visit the pier, walk your way inland, come down, uh, Third Street this way. This is a pedestrianized street up here that has a lot of shops and restaurants on it. And then there's a neat um, shopping mall up here, uh, like the Santa Monica, what do they call this thing now? Um, it's changed names so many times that I can't remember. <laughs> but this uh, shopping mall up at the top uh, just opened the Din Tai Fung up on top. So if you're looking for some cool soup dumplings, that's where you'll find it. And if you want cheaper parking than on the beach, because it might be too expensive, there's cheaper parking up here in the downtown area. Santa Monica is right next to da, 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 Venice Beach and there is a uh, kind of like beachfront boardwalk bicycling path that you can walk or cycle the whole way. You'll notice the beaches are really wide here too. Some of the widest sandiest beaches in Southern California or California in general are here in uh, Santa Monica and Venice and this Venice Beach boardwalk as it's called there's uh, out front is the bike path that runs along the sand, and then this one is the pedestrian path that is known for having um, street performers and artists and vendors. Uh, more people visit the Venice Beach Boardwalk than visit Disneyland. That's how popular the Venice Beach Boardwalk is. Do visit in the daytime. It can get kind of sketchy at nighttime. And if you're looking for the, the high end of Venice, because Venice has a lot of movie stars and celebrities that live there, it's actually, you're not gonna find it on the boardwalk. You will find Muscle Beach though, by the way, where Arnold Schwarzenegger got famous for lifting all of his weights. Um, this street right here, this diagonal street, Abbott Kinney Boulevard is the high end of Venice where you'll find all the flagship shops, restaurants, sunglass stores. And yes, Venice does have canals. There is, it is themed after Venice, Italy, in fact. And so there is still this section of Venice that you can visit that still has all these canals that you can walk around. It's really the cool, kind of quiet, charming part of Venice Beach. Then you've got this neighborhood of Marina del Rey, um, which is this big pleasure marina. If you are looking for a hotel because you want to go to Venice, don't stay in Venice because it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Instead, consider staying here in Marina del Rey. Uh, I like the Marina del Rey Marriott right here. Uh, I may even prefer this to hotels in Santa Monica because Santa Monica hotels can, can be kind of expensive because everybody wants to stay here. Stay here in Marina del Rey where it's quieter and it's cheaper and just a 10 minute drive over to Santa Monica. Okay, we continue ourselves along the coast and we get right here, Los Angeles International Airport. Uh, there are no real big airports between San Francisco and Los Angeles. So these are the two gateway cities. People fly in San Francisco, they fly into Los Angeles. Yes, there is a, a smaller airport in uh, Burbank, um, which is up here. Uh, so if you're coming in from the US, you could fly into Burbank Airport. But if you're flying big internationally, then San Francisco and LAX are your options. Uh, if you're picking from the two, most people say they like San Francisco better than LAX. The flights are cheaper to LAX than they are from San Francisco because 
less people like LAX. LAX, I find, has more connections to more places than San Francisco does. Super big airport, so it's got that going for it. Next town after we find the, the Chevron, uh, the Chevron oil refinery here is <clears throat> Manhattan Beach. Manhattan Beach, if you've got like families and kids and you want kind of a more like chill, although expensive and high end, Manhattan Beach is expensive and high end, but it's chill because it's much more residential type beach and less of a party beach. Uh, check out Manhattan Beach. It has a nice, neat pier with a small aquarium at the end of it. It also has a separate uh, biking and walking paths. And it's kind of neat because Manhattan Beach is like built up on a hillside this way. So it has a little bit of coastal charm to it. Continuing to the south, we get Hermosa Beach, and then we get Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach also has uh, a really big harbor where you can take like tours of the harbor, but it also has this really unique pier. This is uh, like a, what, like a semicircle type pier right here. Lots of restaurants on this pier. Uh, and the restaurants here, uh, can, I, can I zoom in on this and get a click? Pacific Fish Center. Do I get the click? Do I get the click? It's not going to turn into the rest. It's not going to turn into the restaurant icon for me. Anyway, this one that looks less rundown and weird in person. That's just the, the satellite view. Here we go. Pacific. Pacific Fish. Uh, that doesn't give me a picture of the food, does it? Anyway, what do they specialize in? You can see it right here. Korean style seafood. Korean style crab. Korean style crab is the thing to eat at the Redondo Beach Pier. No, I'm not kidding. That's really uh, what the Redondo Beach Pier is famous for. You can also get a lot of uh, sea urchin from Santa Barbara if you can't make it up there. All right. Uh, so the Highway 1 actually continues this way and doesn't run along the coast, but it is a really beautiful drive if you consider, if you continue around the Rancho Palos Verdes Peninsula right here uh, and then come back along this way to Long Beach. Long Beach is home to... Most famously, the Queen Mary, sister ship to the Titanic. It's now a museum. You can take tours of it. Famously, if you go to Tokyo Disney Sea, the Disney Sea theme park in Tokyo, they have a replica of the Queen Mary because Tokyo Disney Sea was actually going to be another Disney theme park that Disney was going to build in Long Beach that they never built, but they built it in Tokyo and they built a replica of the Queen Mary. This is also the big cruise ship port of Los Angeles. So if you're taking like a carnival cruise or something like that, it will come out of Long Beach. There's also an aquarium here, uh, the Aquarium of the Pacific. The Aquarium of the Pacific that is the second best aquarium in California to the Monterey Aquarium that we hit before. Uh, there's also like a lot of hotels to stay at around here. Um, there's a convention center and things like that. So this is, uh, they do some like races and things like that here. This is kind of like a neat, um, like area to kind of like walk around and visit in Long Beach. And the other area that's interesting to walk around in Long Beach, two more. There's this area here called <clears throat> the Belmont Shore. By the way, the beach here in Long Beach, not super great. Why? Well, I mentioned it's a big port. And so there's just like all these like, cargo ships and things like that, and there's breakwaters, and so you don't get any waves, and so not a super great, great beach place, but Second Street here in the Belmont Shore in Long Beach has a lot of restaurants, and that's worth a good walk. Also, this residential neighborhood of Naples is another one that has like kind of like gondolas and canals, and if you're looking for one of the best christmas light neighborhoods in Los Angeles, Naples here in Long Beach is where it's at. Walk along these canals this way just to the south of, oh, and Long Beach also has uh, its own airport, Long Beach Airport, another small airport. You'll get flights maybe to like Hawaii or things like that. Southwest is the big carrier into Long Beach Airport. Small coastal community of Seal Beach, right to the south of, um, right here, this, this, this little, this little, this little thing right here is Seal Beach, um, small town, like 10,000 people or less live here in between Long Beach and Huntington Beach. I have a video walking around there. That's kind of a cool guide. Um, worth a few hours to visit Seal Beach, take a walk down the pier that way. So then we get the much bigger city, Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach is, so we're now in Orange County, by the way. So Los Angeles is a city. Los Angeles is a county. And then south of Los Angeles County is Orange County. Disneyland is in Orange County. Sometimes there's a big argument where I, make LA travel guides and I talk about Disneyland and there's people that'd be like, Disneyland isn't in Los Angeles. And 
I'm like, well, the people who are visitors, it's still Los Angeles. For people who live in Los Angeles, they're like, that's not LA, that's Orange County, but, but for the purpose of this video, <laughs> it's, it's the LA metropolitan region. Uh, so we've got Huntington Beach here, another big wide sandy beach. Huntington Beach is known as Surf City USA. Some of the best year-round surf you can find in Huntington Beach. It has a cool pier, cool restaurant at the end, Broad Street Oyster Company. Amazing views from the second floor of Broad Street Oyster Company. Uh, good sea urchin, good fish and chips. So it's worth a walk down there. Not going to be cheap, uh, but... The views are epic. There's a cool main street here. There's a lot of cool hotels in Huntington Beach too. There's a Hyatt Regency that's on the water. So if you're looking for like beach-ish front hotels, I mean, they're not on the sand, but they're close to the sand. There's a whole set of them right here in Huntington Beach that are worth checking out. Uh, to the south of Huntington Beach, we get Newport Beach. Newport Beach is a Another famously high-end coastal community. It has this cool peninsula right here with two piers on it. The cool things to check out, by this time you're sick of piers, uh, the cool things to check out is the Balboa Fun Zone. If you um, haven't ridden enough uh, Ferris wheels yet, then there is a Ferris wheel uh, that doesn't show up very well on the satellite view, but there is a and that is the worst picture of a Ferris wheel. Where's the Ferris wheel in the picture? You're gonna have to trust me. There's a Ferris wheel right here on the water and there's a car ferry that'll take three cars at a time from Balboa Peninsula out here over here to Balboa Island. So drive your car up here, wait in line for a little bit, put your car on the ferry. Your car will feel like you're driving on the water as you go three minutes across and you pay a couple bucks to put your car on it um, to Balboa Island. Balboa Island is probably the, uh, like Naples has great Christmas lights. Balboa Island has even better Christmas lights. The best place to walk around and see Christmas lights in Southern California is Balboa Island right here uh, because like these houses are 20, 30 million dollars along the water right here. It's a, and it's a pedestrian walkway on the sidewalk. They have like boat docks around them. It's another one where you can see how the 1% live in Balboa Island. Just to the south of Balboa Island in Newport is this place called Crystal Cove State Park. Really neat coastal hikes. It also has some cool coastal campgrounds. So if you want to like camp and like listen to the surf in the background, you can check out the campgrounds right here. And they've even got some, uh, where are they? Over here, over here, over here, over here in front of this thing. Cottages. Where are the cottages? Cottages are here. There used to be people who used to live right here on the water in Crystal Cove, uh, and now you can actually like rent these cottages. Like these cottages are now part of the state park, and if you can, if you can reserve one, because they're hard to reserve for a couple hundred bucks a night, you can get one of these like preserved cottages on the coast, which is super cool. And then you can eat at the Crystal Cove Shake Shack, not the same as the Shake Shack chain from New York, but this uh, neat restaurant that serves burgers, hot dogs, shakes, and has this cool deck that overlooks the Pacific Ocean. It's one of the best views of any restaurant. And then there's even a cooler one down here called the Beachcomber uh, at Crystal Cove that is right here on the sand. Um, so do, do check that out. If you wanna eat at the Beachcomber, make a reservation because it gets busy. They do take reservations. And then you park over at this lot right here, and then you can take a shuttle, or you can walk about 15 minutes in that parking lot down to that restaurant. Okay, before we go, um, well here, we'll hit one more city in Orange County and then we'll go down to San Diego. So just south of Newport Beach is Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach is a cool, like really artsy vibe town. Uh, what makes it really different or special, much kind of like Malibu, if you notice there's a strip of Laguna Beach and then these mountains back this way, there's like seven miles of mountains between Laguna Beach and the rest of Orange County. And then there's just this like small strip of houses or village that rings the water along the Pacific Coast Highway. So it has a small village by the ocean feel. Laguna Beach has seven beachfront hotels. So if you're looking for a hotel on the sand, Laguna Beach is your best bet. Uh, and their main beach is called Main Beach right here. Neat Crescent Beach right that. Um, when I go for a walk on the beach uh, in Orange County, Laguna Beach is where I tend to go walking down this. You can see it's like a pretty big sandy strip that runs this way down to Arch Cove. And then south in Orange County, 
people really, there's Dana Point, there's San Clemente, San Onofre, Camp Pendleton, which is a big Marine Corps base. Most people don't really visit that from a tour perspective. And then pick up here at Oceanside, which this, this begins San Diego County over here. And then we'll hit Tijuana. But before I get to San Diego, let's hit some comments from the live stream. Okay, uh, Globo, uh, thank you for your support, uh, helping you to your journey to SoCal. Genified says, I love Laguna Beach. It is so beautiful. It is a one take situation. Really likes the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, just so like it's between Laguna Beach and Dana Point. The Ritz Carlton Laguna Niguel. Uh, amazing, amazing hotel. Uh, Evelina says I should keep the beachcomber secret. I guess the secret is out. I really like the burger with avocado on it from there. Um, and I guess Cottage Full of Love says uh, good luck getting a reservation for the cottages. They're really hard to get. I've tried many times. Like you have to get them in like one second from the time uh, that they actually get reserved. Uh, Point Traveler says the thing he doesn't like about Huntington Beach hotels is that there's a highway between them and the beach. True. And so Laguna Beach, you don't have that problem. Laguna Beach, the hotels are right on the sand. Uh, and Genified says if you go to Huntington Beach, then check out Dukes. <coughs> and Point Traveler says Orange County is day and night compared to LA. For those of us that know the region well, I live in Orange County. And so for those of us that live in Orange County, agree, they are day and night but to visitors, they're pretty much the same thing, right? All the same region, which is why I always include Orange County whenever I talk about LA stuff. Um, and Andrew points out that uh, Fashion Island and South Coast Plaza are some of the top malls in the state. Yes, if you are looking uh, to visit malls, uh, Fashion Island, which is in Newport Beach, South Coast Plaza, which is in Costa Mesa, Santa Ana, um, Westfield Century City in LA, Westfield UTC in San Diego, and then the Brand and the Grove uh, in um, the Americana at Brand and the Grove in LA. That's kind of like my set of favorite malls in California that I do intend to do a video of at some point. I did a Best Malls in Singapore, but I haven't done Best Malls in California. Coming soon, mark my word. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit San Diego now. We'll go back to our map. Woo! Here we are on the map. So San Diego County, uh, so when you come through like Camp Pendleton, the 101 is gone, the 1 is gone, the Pacific Coast Highway is gone. You just get the 5 when you go through Camp Pendleton, the Marine Corps base. You're not on the base, but the interstate runs through it. Oceanside, first town in San Diego you'll come to. Uh, neat, neat pier here in Oceanside 2. Um, just to the south of Oceanside, we have Carlsbad. Carlsbad is famous for... Dun, dun, dun. Where is it on the map? Here's the outlets. Carlsbad premium outlets. Just back here is Legoland. By the way, this whole zooming in without searching is really testing my geography skills. Tell you how, whether I know California or not. Um, so... Uh, Legoland right here is a Lego themed theme park. This is the third third Legoland that was built out of all the Legolands. Pretty fun place if you have kids that are younger than 12. It's got two hotels in front of it, the Legoland Hotel and the Lego Castle Hotel. There's also a Sea Life Aquarium there. Kind of lame compared to the other aquariums I've talked through earlier. Then if we continue south, uh, most people Kind of keep going until they get to Torrey Pines State Natural Reserve. If you're looking to do some coastal hikes, uh, this is a really cool place to hike because it's home to the native Torrey Pine, which is a pine tree that's only native to certain parts of Southern California. So you can see those there, beautiful coastal views. Torrey Pines Golf Course, one of the most famous golf courses in California is up here. Then we get the neighborhood of La Jolla, known as the Gem. It's really beautiful. There's some neat like coves. There's a big sea lion community that lives in La Jolla. The village of La Jolla is a cool place to walk around and a lot of little shops there. A lot of high-end hotels in La Jolla here too. Mount Soledad up here uh, at the tippy top of this mountain, um, right here at Mount Soledad Memorial Park. You can get uh, views of like all of San Diego. You'll see it from the Interstate 5. There's like a big cross on top of it. Um, and that's like a view from the 
Park, where you see all La Jolla. So that's a cool view if you just want to get your bearings on San Diego. And then here we have Mission Bay. This is a big pleasure bay. Mission Beach, the beach in front of it, is home to the, another big roller coaster. So if you like roller coasters, very similar to the one in Santa Cruz, you got this one here, kind of like little beachfront amusement park, indoor swimming pool called the Plunge that's like 100 years old. This is one of my kind of favorite go-to beaches in San Diego. If uh, you like party kind of stuff, just I passed it, but in between La Jolla and Mission Beach is Pacific Beach. This is San Diego's party beach. If you like booze and tattoos, you will love Pacific Beach because there's more bars per capita than any other part of San Diego. Also, there's a neat place to stay called Crystal Pier. There's the cottages at Crystal Pier, which is this hotel that you can actually stay on the pier over the water. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then there's a lot of hotels that ring the bay. The Catamaran uh, is a cool one that rings the bay here. Uh, and then there's also the Bahia Resort right here that comes out here on the water. The There's a Hyatt right over here, Hyatt Regency Mission Bay. There's the Dana over here, and then there's Paradise Point right over here. So those are some pretty cool hotels that like tend to be overlooked if you're searching San Diego, because if you search San Diego, you will tend to get back hotels that are in the downtown area right here and not the coastal stuff. So those are some cool places to stay. Cabrillo National Monument, if you want some of the best views of San Diego, visit the Cabrillo National Monument. There is a statue here of Juan Cabrillo. Um, just, do I get a view picture? Oh, there's a lighthouse. This picture's a lighthouse. There's a statue of Juan Cabrillo right here, uh, and then views of all of San Diego down that way. If you watch my Ensenada video, you'll know that uh, there's also a similar statue of Juan Cabrillo in Ensenada. And then uh, over here, we'll, <clears throat> we'll, this is San Diego Airport. San Diego Airport, super close in to downtown San Diego, all the beaches, also really close to SeaWorld, right over here. This is the downtown area, home to uh, the San Diego Convention Center, which is home to San Diego Comic Con, tons of big conventions here. Ballpark right here, uh, cool hotels here, Hyatt Manchester Grand, Marriott Marquis, um, Hilton Bayfront. These are some of the ones I like in downtown San Diego. The Gas Lamp District uh, along Fifth Avenue. There's a lot of bars and restaurants around here. Then just north of it is Balboa Park, which is the largest uh, urban park in the U.S. outside of like Central Park. And it's got a whole bunch of museums. It is also home to the San Diego Zoo, probably the best zoo in the USA. Uh, not to be confused with the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, which is about 30 miles north in Escondido. If you want to know what the differences are, I've got videos on both of them. You can check them out and see which one is for you. And then if we go further to the south, we end up in uh, Tijuana. But before we do that, uh, Coronado right here, the beach in Coronado has been ranked one of the best beaches in the USA for families. You can see it's another big, wide, sandy beach right here. And the Hotel Del Coronado is a really cool, classic hotel. If you've been to Disney World and you've seen the Grand Floridian Hotel, it is modeled after the Hotel Del Coronado, the largest wooden hotel on uh, the west coast of the USA. Uh, it's cool just to visit, even if you're not going to Coronado. They call it Coronado Island. It's technically not an island. It's actually connected by this strip of land called the Silver Strand down near Peel Beach, but it's got this bridge that connects it. Now, you might see cheap hotels here in Imperial Beach and be like, that's cool, I'll stay there. Note, water's often polluted, beach is often closed, sewage comes in from the Tijuana River, comes up this way, sometimes up to the Silver Strand, usually clean by the time you get to Coronado, um, but so beware if you're staying down here in Imperial Beach. Tijuana is just over this way, uh, and then some other connections that people make. We're gonna zoom back out here. If you were going out to Arizona, you would come out the Interstate 8 over this way, which would take you to Arizona. If you come up this way, you can take out Palm Springs, Joshua Tree, Death Valley, the Interstate 15. Where's the 15 go? 
15's hiding from me. <laughs> the Interstate 15 runs up this way and goes to Las Vegas. Uh, and then the Interstate 40, this is what'll take you over to the Grand Canyon. Uh, before we go to q and I have one last thing to share with you that I'm gonna share with you more on my next live stream where I talk uh, all about how to get good deals on hotels. But since I've mentioned a lot of hotels, I uh, just wanted to share uh, this thing I've been working on or with recently is this new booking site called planin.com uh, and planin's focused on like creator reviews and so an additional home that I'm putting my video reviews in addition to YouTube is on planin.com so you can come here and you can find all the hotels that I recommend and you can see the availability and Chris's suggested destinations. I just did the review of the Venetian, um, which that's not LA, that's Vegas. But the point why I'm showing this to you is that they actually offer like really good insider deals on hotels. Um, so you can get like the Venetian here maybe for, as it says, 11% off. Uh, but we can look and say like, hey, maybe we wanna go to Los Angeles right here, California, put in our dates. Maybe we wanna go in March for a couple of days. And uh, so what's neat about like sorting the search is the search that it sorts will come back and say like, hey, these are different creators that recommend this. Here's one that Yellow Productions recommends and it's 15% off. And you know what? This rate, uh, I went to the website for Hyatt Place and I checked it like before I did the search and it was more than on this on planning.com. Like they have special insider deals with hotels uh, up to like 40% off. But the deal is they can't share them with the public because they're insider rates. And so the only way you can get them is if you sign up for a planning.com account. I have a link in the description if you want to do that. Um, but if you're looking to book California hotels, I would recommend that you check planning.com, see if the rate's cheaper. Um, when for New Year's Eve, I stayed at the Win the win on New Year's Day, the Win Hotel in Las Vegas. My Win review is coming out in about a week. Forty percent off the rates from Win's website uh, here on Planin.com. All right, and if you do book through that link, tiny small commission goes to support Yellow Productions and provide premium bamboo for all of the Yellow Productions crew. Fellow explorers, it is now Q and A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, it is now time for Q&A. And so if you've got a question, I have got an answer. So go ahead and toss those questions into the chat. Uh, Ilford says, how much is a plan and account? Zero dollars, it is free. Doesn't cost anything to sign up. You could even do it while we're talking right now. Link is in the description if you do want to check it out. I should probably make it easier for you and actually just like uh, drop a, Drop an actual link in there. Where do I drop a link in the chat maybe? Here we go. Uh, here's this link right here. Copy, uh, paste, enter. Z Zero dollars is a plan and account. Um, and so that link is now in the chat. All right. Christina says, Chris, which SoCal beach city is your most favorite? Manhattan, Huntington, Redondo, and which one in NorCal? From, uh, well, I guess this is like my favorite SoCal beach city is Laguna Beach. I just feel like Laguna Beach has like a special vibe to it. Lucy Girl and I got married in Laguna Beach. We did our uh, like wedding night, not at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel, but at the hotel just back from it that they call uh, Monarch, Monarch Beach. Um, so that's my favorite. Uh, which one in NorCal? I don't know that I have a favorite. I don't, this is why I call them, do I call them beach towns in NorCal? You know, like, so Santa Cruz. I like Santa Cruz. Uh, Santa Cruz to me is the most beachy town in NorCal. And I feel like um, Santa Cruz has the most, like, relaxed vibe to it. Angela says, have you been to Winchester Mystery House? Of course I can. The Winchester, of course I can. Of course I have. The Winchester Mystery House is in San Jose, so it's in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, it is this house that was built by Miss Winchester of the Winchester gun. When her husband passed away, she felt she was being haunted by ghosts, and the only way to please the ghosts was to keep building on her house, and so it has like over a hundred room staircases that lead into ceilings. Um, you have to take a guided tour of it, but it's totally worth it. If you haven't been in the Winchester house, uh, definitely worth doing 
Phil says, do you love your job? How demanding is it? I love my job. Um, so my actual, uh, what, like day job, uh, computer science is my background. So I work in software. I also work in YouTube and in content like this. And I guess I've really like, this is my full-time uh, hobby, uh, but I enjoy doing this too. And I enjoy software and they kind of come together to be like, sometimes people join here on the live streams to be like, Chris, I love your live stream because they look like a show and they're well-produced. And that's all the computer science in me to be like, how do I get these whiz bang spinny question marks? And you know, how do I get these things to come up? So I love that they all come together. Um, Codge Full of Love says, it seems wrong to call Santa Cruz NorCal missing out a whole beautiful section of the state. You're right. I did kind of gloss over everything north of San Francisco because only 1% of tourists go north of San Francisco. Um, Dewey says, have you been to Hearst Castle? Yes, Hearst Castle. Uh, great. Definitely worth a visit. Uh, Joe wants to know when I'm going to do a walking tour of the Tenderloin and Skid Row. Not at the top of my list right now. Maybe, maybe a windshield tour, video through my car, something like that. Evelina says, do you have any travel guides uh, from Carmel up towards coastal Oregon? No, not yet. Um, but that'd be, it's on my list of like road trips to do and make some videos of. Uh, Pierce, hey Pierce. Hey Pierce in Irvine. Howdy neighbor. Um, <clears throat> Sean asked if I've been to Iceland. I have not been to Iceland yet. I'd like to go to Iceland though. Uh, Kathy is going to Tokyo and says, we've booked Shibuya Sky. Do you think we should go to Tokyo Tower or Tokyo Sky Tree 2? If so, which one? Sky Tree. Sky Tree, Sky Tree, Sky Tree. Uh, Tokyo Tower. Tokyo Tower is a replica of the Eiffel Tower, and so it feels touristy and kind of lame. Tokyo Sky Tree, definitely worth it. Tokyo Sky Tree has two observatories, the top one, and you got to pay like 10 bucks more, 1,000 yen more to go up to the next one. Go up to the next one. It's worth it. Um, so yes, I think Shibuya Sky is cool because it's outdoors, and then Tokyo Sky Tree is cool because it's so, 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 so tall. Just, uh, make sure you go on a, well, I guess you book these things, and so it's hard to tell whether it's going to be rainy or a clear day or not. Um, but it is absolutely worth it. Uh, Codge Full of Love says, when is your next trip planned? We just came back from Sedona, Arizona, um, so you can look for that travel guide coming soon, although... My travel guides from Grand Canyon, Zion Canyon, Bryce Canyon, those are coming out soon too. Got a few more Vegas videos to drip out here, win review, best luxury hotels in Vegas, and then a uh, mega vlog for those Grand Canyons I talked about. I got a 90 minute edit of my seven days of those canyons, and then uh, Vegas for New Year's Eve, so you can stay tuned for that. We've not uh, like formally booked our next trip yet, but we're thinking uh, Banff, Banff in Canada uh, is a place we're going to go. And then we're also uh, contemplating our next European adventure. We are debating between like the UK and Scotland or uh, like the south of France. Uh, sort of like driving tours for either one, but that's sort of where we sit now on future things. Uh, Rico says, good evening from Arizona. Just signed up for Planin. Thanks, Rico. I hope you find some good deals there. Uh, and thanks, thanks for letting me know. Um, Joe says, are you going to go to the Paris Olympics? Probably not. We, so we looked at like France, um, when we, uh, do go to France. We're like, we need to make sure we definitely don't go during the Olympics time because everything's going to be too busy, uh, too crazy. Um, that's like definitely one of my like cheap travel tips like the way we could sometimes people ask sometimes people ask the question chris how can you afford to go to all these places to travel and all these things and like so to go to sedona we uh used our we tried to go to sedona last year actually we tried to go to sedona um in what year is this 2024, 2023, 2022. December of 2022, we tried to go to Sedona, Arizona. We had flights booked on Southwest. Southwest had a great meltdown where they canceled all flights for like nearly two weeks. We were caught up in that. We got some frequent flyer points out of that. Uh, so sorry for you. So we used our frequent flyer points to book our flights to Phoenix. Uh, I used my Marriott credit card certificate to book the Phoenix Airport Marriott for the first night. Then we stayed... Uh, like in central Sedona, hotels are like, they're really expensive. They're like five or $600. Uh, but we were able to get a rate for $250 at the Element Sedona, a couple miles outside of Sedona. 
uh, and then we had to pay for our food. And we paid like 120 bucks a rental car. So anyway, that's how we tend to go places, so many places, because we actually find out like the inexpensive ways to go there. Um, Kathy on her trip is gonna miss my next few live streams. I'm sure you'll watch the archive, Kathy. We will represent you, the koala cat in spirit. Uh, Stone Deer says, you gonna visit any World Cup games? Probably not. Uh, we are not huge sports fans. College Full Love says, if you could live in any town in Cali, no money object, where would you live? Um, I think Newport Beach. Newport Beach would be pretty cool. Uh, one of those houses with a boat dock on the front of it. Yeah, I like it. I like that Newport Beach has like some charming sections of it that don't seem super busy, that don't seem super touristy. Uh, and Joe asks if I've gone on a yacht, uh, like maybe in like museum, like maritime museums I've been on a yacht, but I've never been on a yacht that's been like floating around the water. Um, and Pierce says, I booked the Hyatt in Vancouver for spring break from your review. Awesome, Pierce. I hope you enjoy it. We enjoyed that hotel. Uh, and then uh, he says, I'm going to Chengdu, China, to see the pandas in June. Have you been? Uh, I have been to Beijing in China, uh, but not to Chengdu to see the pandas. Sounds like fun. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Now it is time for... Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, every live stream on the live stream, I always give away a Yellow Productions crew shirt to somebody who answers a question. And my question to you is when I showed planin.com and I showed a hotel from Los Angeles that Yellow Productions recommends, what hotel was that? If you answer that question correctly, uh, you'll win the shirt shipped anywhere to you. If you uh, don't, <laughs> win one. Uh, you can pick one up at the Yellow Production Shop. You'll find that link right here. Uh, and if you wonder, Chris, when is the next live stream? You can sign up for the Yellow Productions mailing list right here, the Yellow Productions update, where I'll email you every time I got a new video out and every time I'm planning a live stream, what the topic is, what the date is, what the time is, so you never miss a another live stream. All right, let's go ahead and see if we have any right answers in the chat. Du, 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 du. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. All right, congratulations to Paul Ng. You said it right, the Hyatt Glendale. Uh, and you know what? Technically, technically, Joe is right. It's the Hyatt Place Glendale. Uh, and you know what? I'm gonna be generous and I'm gonna give out two, ter two shirts today because this was a hard one. Joe and Paul, uh, you both win Yellow Productions crew shirts. Send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your address and what size shirt you want and I'll get that headed right to you. All right, well, fellow explorers, it's a pleasure hanging out with y'all. If you didn't sign up for planin.com, link's in the description. It's also in the chat. I'll drop it in here as we do the outro, just so you can get some good deals on hotels. And again, help feed the Panda crew. If you do book through there, if you get a good rate, helps us all out at the same time. I'll talk even more about it and show you more deals when I do my next live stream, all about how to get good deals on hotels. As usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you in the next video.